Hello class, welcome to the final lecture on graphing rational exponents. We talked last time about having a fraction be the power on x, and now we're gonna go full tilt and take all the safety handles off and just run wild with anything as possible. So, the first thing that we need to consider is something that you maybe have forgotten, which is what happens when the exponent is negative. So for example, if I needed to graph y equals x to the negative one, you remember what negative exponents mean. We talked about this, that that is uh, one over x. So that means that when I plug in one, I get one. When I plug in zero, I get undefined, yikes. Uh, when I plug in half, I get two and a quarter, I get four. And when I plug in four, I get a quarter. And when I plug in half or two, I get half. So we're swooshing that way. And that means there's an asymptote there. And then what about negatives? Can I plug in negatives? Well, yeah, one over negatives work. And so then you're gonna get something that looks like that. All right, so there's a terrible drawing. A much better uh, representation would be like this. And so you can see that we've got asymptotes at y equals zero and x equals zero. So what would happen if we had a different exponent? What would happen if we had y equals x to the negative two? Well, that would be one over x squared. And you remember what squaring does, what any even exponent does, is it makes you always positive. Because if you have something squared, a negative times a negative is positive, and a positive times a positive is positive. So it's always going to be positive. So we're gonna end up with essentially the same graph with the same asymptotes, except that left side gets flipped up and gets forced to be positive as well. And again, pardon my terrible graphs, but here is a better representation of that. All right, so we've talked about negatives. We've seen, broadly speaking, about curvature, about concavity. So I don't think I used the word concavity last time. And one of, and this has come up already this school year, but let's refresh ourselves and say, concavity is when you've got uh, something curving up at both ends, even if you've like tilted it and it's barely going up at all, or maybe even just exactly flat on one end or the other, that's still concave up, okay? So we've got concavity as a topic. Okay, so let's cover our topics here. We've got negatives, we've got concavity, and concavity can be uh, like this is concave up, and even this, what we just drew, is concave up, and so is the one on the other end. And therefore we can see that concave down is gonna be most typically when both ends go down, but we might also have things like this that are concave down. So concave up, concave down, it's about uh, are things uh, increasing and how fast they're increasing. You'll get to that in calculus. Okay, so um, we've mentioned negatives, we've mentioned concavity. Now we need to get into the full meal deal, rational exponents. Okay, so y equals x to the m, f of x equals x to the m over n. And so the first thing to consider is what about m and what happens when it's odd? Well, you know these. These are all things that we've done before. You've done x cubed, for example. Example. So when x is cubed, that means that you go up to the right and down to the left and everything is possible. You can go every which way you want. Versus when m is even, for example, x squared, then even if you try to go to the negative side, you still end up getting forced to be positive. And then something very similar happens with the roots, is that when you've got an odd root, like a cube root, for example, then you swoosh left and right, all possible x's and y's, versus when you take an even root, for example, the square root, you can only go to the right. So that should all be review. That should all be things that you've seen before. What we're gonna do different today is we're gonna put it all together. We're gonna try to have all of these things come together into graphing roots and powers at the same time, something with a fractional exponent. 
So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to split up the cases. We're, when, we're, when we're talking about um, x to the m over n, the first thing we have to consider, option number one, is what about m? What about m? Well, if m is even, like we saw, if you've got a, um, a squaring or a fourth power, then, um, then that's going to um, make your range be uh, only the positives. So that was this one right here where we said, okay, so I've squared the function. No matter what root I do after that, I've only got positive y's available versus when we had odd roots, then the range could be all real numbers. That that was this one over here. Anything is possible in the y direction. All right, thing number two to consider. Thing number two is n, this root business, okay? So if we have an even root, if we have an even root, we just drew a picture of this, then your domain is only positive numbers and zero. So that if you have an even root, you can't take an even root of a negative number over the real numbers. So that's gonna restrict you that way. Versus if you have an odd root, then your domain can still be all real numbers that you can have left and right possible. Okay, last of all, is it positive or is it negative? Last option to think about is plus versus minus. And so this minus case, it really gets very ugly to graph. You can't get a lot of detail out of it. You can still find fractions, but there are gonna be no lattice points except one, one, and either one, negative one, or negative one, negative one. So when we have a negative, then you're gonna have asymptotes at x equals zero and y equals zero. And so we saw that with uh, both of these, that when you've got x equals zero or y equals zero, then you're, 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 gonna, you're gonna have asymptotes at x equals zero and y equals zero whenever the exponent is negative. Versus if you've got a, uh, a positive exponent, then you've got to really n double down on figuring out the whole powers over roots business. You really have to do that for both of these, but the, the difficulty of figuring out something with a negative, the graphs all pretty much look alike. All right, so there's all the possibilities. Now, for you people who love to be super OCD about your notes, and that's not a bad thing. So let's make a uh, all possible cases here. Let's say, is M even? I'm gonna split the paper in half. Or is M odd? Those, those are the first two-fold possibilities. Then within that, you could have had n is even or n is odd. And either n is even, neven, or nod. And think about what it means to say you've got an even number on top of an even number in a fraction. It means you didn't reduce. It means they both divide by two and you didn't simplify the fraction. So this one is a big no-no. This means that you didn't reduce the fraction. Ha-ha, fooled you. So look out for that. And then within each of these, you can have positives or negatives, positives or negatives, positives or negatives. Okay. All right, let's think up some examples. Let's say that we've got x to the 4 thirds, because that's an even number on top and an odd number on bottom. Yes, that works. So that means that um, if m is even, then it's like squaring or something like that, so we're only gonna exist up. So this is gonna be a no-no, this is gonna be a no-no, and then if it is an odd root, then I can, I can still plug in negatives or positives. So I'm gonna swoosh and, okay, so then this is the other part, is that powers over roots, this is gonna be concave up. This is more up than over. This is, this, this, is, this numerator, this, um, the whole fraction, m over n, is greater than one, so that's gonna look like this. 
and I'll go through those points one one negative one one. I I could have had uh, a smaller numerator than denominator, and then I would have been concave uh, down. So that's uh, that's going to look like that and like that. So those are those are possibilities there. You could you can. Even when we get through all of this, you can still have two different kinds of concavity. You can still have two different kinds of, uh, is it concave up or concave down? Is the, is the fraction greater than one or less than one? So look at the, the last video for that. All right, and the negatives just look terrible. Negatives, um, like x to the negative four-thirds, they all have asymptotes at zero and zero. So they look like that. We've got the odd number on top of an even number. So let's just do three fourths, x to the three fourths. So this means that the power is cubed. So I would want to plug, I would still get negative numbers, right? So that just, if I just only look at the three, I would get this and that. I would be able to do negatives, but when I take a even root, that means I can't do negatives, that they don't work. And I picked something with a bottom bigger than the top, so I need to curve off that way. So you see how the negatives don't work? If I try to take an even root of a negative number, then I get imaginary. That doesn't work, we can't do that. And so then the negative of that is gonna be very boring, just, that one there, but you can still always get your asymptotes. All right, then comes the coolest one of all, the one that goes every which where, is when you've got odd over odd. So let's do three fifths, and that means that when I plug in a positive, oh, but I made the fraction less than one, so I need to shoot off that way, and then negatives will still be negative, so that's gonna go that way. It's basically gonna look like a cube root. And then if I have the negative of that, that goes swooshing this way and that way with asymptotes there. All right, so there is the super quick summary of that. I highly recommend you to experiment around with your calculator. You've got to be sure to put those exponents in parentheses. If you do x to the 3 divided by 5, your calculator will do x cubed divided by 5. So you've got to be sure to put the exponent in parentheses, you poor 83 people who don't get to float up above the number. So look out for uh, the power, even or odd, the root, even or odd, the whole exponent, positive or negative. Like we said last time, there is concavity. There's, is it curving more than x to the 1 or less than x to the 1? Lots of things to look out for. We'll practice more of these in class. See you soon.